Back to rotation. Moving on to Vitruvian. We're going to lose a few things here as well, I think. So number one is Falcus. Falcus is like probably the best three drop in the game. Actually, there's no probably about it. It's far and away the best three drop in the game. I think with Falcius gone, that mantle probably falls back to Silver Guard Knight. But Skippy gives him a run for his money. I don't really know. I think it's quite close between those two. Like, Silver Guard Knight's an amazing card. But yeah, Falcius is just far and away like one of the most busted cards ever. Um, and deservedly so, because before Falcius came out, Vitruvian were completely unplayable. So it did actually put them on the map in some measurable way. But now they have enough stuff that we can probably do without it. Like, my Lady Lock deck that I intended to just meme with on stream, and I'm actually like 24 with, um, doesn't play any Falcius, and it's still really powerful. I'm going to be so sad with Falcius gone. I'm going to... Do you know what? Initially, I thought I'd miss him, but I'm really not going to. Like, this card is so hard to play around in the early game. It's so, and it's, it's so unforgiving, because, like, they don't just get the tempo hit. They don't just get the 3-3 body as well as removing your thing. They don't just get to hit you in the face for 4 or whatever. It's also card advantage. It's every kind of advantage at once. Um, like all the best cards in Duelist. And so, you know, again, in the early game, like, you can come back from a Falcus. It doesn't instantly win you the game, but it's really hard to set up your board on turn 2, knowing your opponent can just Falcus. <laughs> like, they probably have one. You always keep it in the opening hand. Like... It's going to make playing against Vitruvian's early game much easier. Uh, much fairer. Especially as, like, right now you have to worry about Falcius and the follow-up of Thunderhorn or Lost from the Desert. And now you only have to worry about the latter, so you can take advantage of them having a relatively weak turn 3 again. Oh, you said glad. Oh, you missed... <laughs> Sorry, I just completely misread you. Um, yeah, I don't think... I don't think... Much as I have enjoyed my time with Falcius, I've definitely come to prefer games without it um in other news pax has obviously fallen out of re uh, favor recently with the rise of thunderhorn but this card has been good for a long time i think it's been a bit overshadowed recently it's you know even without thunderhorn it's just not as good now because it's a little bit slow but you know lots of th lots of the time like i think pax for me was the first card that really heralded the way Vitruvian decks worked because based on their ignoring the bit where Xerix's Dervishes had Rush based on what I saw from them initially when I started playing um, I thought they were going to be like a, a sort of combo-y nonsense faction where they have all these cool cards that are very powerful but also fragile like obelisks and things like that um, and it turns out the way Vitruvian decks actually win is they play all this silly nonsense cards um and use you know removal and tempo spells to get ahead on board while constantly hitting you in the face and pax is like pax was the card that taught me that because you know it's only a 2-1 so you hit it and you know you, or you let it hit you and then you walk over and you kill one of the two twos you leave the other one up because you don't want to trade minions for it but you, you can kill it with the general next turn so you've, you've taken four already your opponent silence first which is the other dervish and attacks you with it. Um, now you've taken seven. There's still a three-one in play. So next turn you have to deal with it. You either use a blood tier alchemist or you just take the lumps and trade one of your minions. Um, and like in dealing with this two drop, that you think, oh, they're just two health minions. I can kill them for free. You've now taken like ten damage, <laughs> and you're dying. Um, and they only spent two mana on the privilege plus you know, plus a silence first wish. And I think that was where I started to learn how vet were actually going to work and i think that's the case to this day like vitruvian decks they're so powerful because you know they can make tempo plays get value get ahead and blah 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 while constantly smashing you in the face um which has been a hallmark of good duelist decks for the most part for a long time like even arcanist fey you know much slower deck but you still get hit for two every turn um oh a deck list the thing i was talking about on youtube when I started playing 17 seasons ago, I lost I lost a ton against Pax. I took time to learn not to hit it on my turn. Oh, <laughs> yes. That's definitely not what you want to be doing. Um, Blackwalt, I'll have a look at your... Oh, that link seems to be broken. Your, um... Oh, never mind. It's because it's melded with the word next to it.
Yeah, can you repost your link, Black Wolves? It seems to be broken. Um, Whisper of the Sands is going to be another big deal. I think, unless there's a card similar to it, which I doubt there will be, it's quite a unique effect. Um, we're going to go back to the days of having to actually play your obelisks and stick them for a turn to get dervishes out of them. Whereas Whisper let you make these, excuse me, relatively sweet plays of like, play an obelisk, play Whisper, play two obelisks, play Whisper, double Whisper, and just like, build a Star's Fury out of nowhere. Um, so I think losing Whisper is going to be, it's not going to make or break any decks. Um, but I think losing it is going to take some flexibility out of the obelisks themselves and therefore obelisk bet by not allowing you to play play them more aggressively like that or hold on to them for later like you'll have to deploy them earlier in the game expose them to more removal um, wind slicer i've played this card i used to play this i've seen other people play it it was reasonable it's not as good nowadays like i'd rather play these guys but you know this card used to be pretty solid it feels really good when you get the like double discount or something you can have some really nice openings with it Astral Flood. I've seen this card played, but I've never played it myself. I think it's kind of bad, mostly. Uh, Falcus, we've talked about. Conduit is going to make me sad, because I um, bloody love my Cipheron deck. But most people don't actually play this. But I think... So, Conduit's not actually that good. Especially right now, there's not that many minions around. But it's so sick when you lantern fox, still a lantern fox with it. Um, and I'm going to miss it on that basis alone. Alamancer, I'm not sure I've ever played this as evinced by the fact that I apparently still only have one copy of it, but um, it is a pretty powerful card. Sweet design. It's always a headache to play against. Corpse Combustion, losing that makes me sad because you can't use it with Kanoom Car, but that's probably for the best, I'll be honest. Nimbus, that makes our hacker sad, I know that much. I haven't... Man, I haven't got Nimbus out to play in ages. No more Agravix and Obelisks. Obelix. I I appreciate your pun there. Although I think um, I think that's that's a stretch. I think we'll still see Obelisk Vet. I think we'll still see Agro Vet. Um, I, I, if I definitely think we'll we'll still see both. Um, we'll probably have more Obelisk support coming. And even without Whisper of the Sands, like there's still I mean, well, Kanumka is Obelisk support. There's that. Obelisk still have rebuild. Yeah, reassemble is a really really good card. Really really good. And there's also this Trigon Obelisk. Like, people aren't playing that right now, but that card is insane. Um, I think the main thing that's holding Obelisk vet back is the current popularity of EMP in the other Vitruvian decks. And I guess to a lesser extent, Thunderhorn is quite good against Obelisks. Spine Cleaver? Um, that'll be a loss for Skippy, for sure. This card is pretty sweet, but always hard to use. Like, it kind of sucks when your opponent has one, but when it's actually in your hand, you're like, oh, it's so low impact the turn you play it. 